So today is on harmfulness. <coughs> yeah, on harmfulness. In a way, it's very simple. No? The part one of the exercise to check on yourself whether you have had thoughts of harmfulness in the past and then to um, catch yourself if you have those thoughts at the moment no? or if you entertain such thoughts uh, to carry out in the future. Yeah. Uh, would be it towards human beings or any living beings. Yeah. Um, I was, I was um, <clears throat> thinking. Sometimes we may we may think of these uh, practices in isolation, uh, but our our greed, hatred, delusion, yeah, or covetousness. Uh, harmfulness and delusion, they often arise in tandem with each other. Yeah, that means together with another one. Yeah, or they arise because of each other. So, because of uh, delusion, then greed and anger arise. Yeah, because of greed, anger can arise. Yeah. Uh, why? How so? So, because we think that the things that or people that we delight in, that we fancy, are so tangible, so real. We feel that the nice things is really so nice. We feel that our ego is so important. Uh, we feel that uh, the person is so important. Yeah. So our strong want craving up to greed, up to covetousness arise. And then um, how does anger arise due to the greed? When, we, when what we want cannot be achieved, then we get upset. Mm. And when we get upset, we may do things to upset people. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes not directly to upset people, but to get back at people, yeah, or to prove that we are the, we are the, uh, we are capable, yeah. Uh, we want to, how do I put it? Chinese we say, "我咽下，我咽不下这口气。”啊，等我们这口气要吐出来。Yeah. Hey, is Lin Toy here today? Lin Toy, what recently? Hey, is Lin Toy here today? Recently, Lin Toy, am I? Yeah. So, <clears throat> don't think that they are in isolation. Uh. Mm. If we don't have um, uh, greed uh, for things, anger for things, it's hard to arise by itself. Yeah, the two often comes up in a pair. And the two ultimately stems from our, how do I put it? Uh, easy to just say from our delusion. Uh, easy to say from the wrong seeing of things. Yeah. But if we have never seen it correctly, we cannot understand why it's wrong. <laughs> That's why initially we must have a bit of faith. <clears throat> the faith that we probably see it wrong. So in some of the texts, it says, how do, how do we know? On what basis should we have this faith? Well, if we are seeing it correctly, then, and yet it leads to greed, hatred, delusion, leads to our suffering, leads to other people's suffering. If seeing correctly leads to suffering, then something is wrong in this world. <laughs> Then you can forget about meditation. <laughs> you can throw away all the Buddha Dharma. Then it means that the, 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 your current, in any case, even if you say that you are currently seeing correctly, let's just, let's just go in this angle. Huh? Let's say you think, no, I'm seeing correctly. Okay. But if correctly leads to suffering, 
then do you still want to continue seeing in this correct way? So is, is, is that a logical conclusion? Mm. So I don't want to say that you are seeing wrongly, you know? yeah. But if your current way of seeing things or your point of view or way of doing things annoys others, get you into trouble, then how correct can it be? Uh, how correct can it be? Imagine we are all in the dark, okay? Uh, and then you, you think that go, going out of the house is this direction. And you spend the last half an hour walking in this direction. And let's assume you never bump into anything, but you just came up walking, walking, walking. Half an hour, no. How, how big is any of your house? Or let's say you are not going out. In the middle of the night, you wake up and you are going to, to the toilet. And you think that the toilet is in the particular, particular direction. And you walk for five minutes. How big is your house? Can you walk for five minutes in your house? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some of you live in a villa or live in like Michi, uh, I don't know. <laughs> then, if after walking for five minutes, let's assume you never bump into anything, you never hurt yourself. But you're not getting to where you want, right? Then you've got to ask yourself, is that still correct? You can label it correct, but it's definitely not getting you to the right place or where you want to be. So the delusion is thinking that you are still going where you want to be <laughs> and thinking that your direction is correct, even though you are absolutely not going to where you want. Yeah. So self-delusion is the worst. You know? so <laughs> So in that sense, uh, um, some students say, well, how do I know I'm doing it right? Or how do I know uh, the teaching is correct? Or this is correct, this is wrong. Just ask yourself, well, where do you want to, where are you headed? Where are you headed? Some people think that um, like they encounter problem with person A, they think that A is wrong, I'm right. They encounter a problem with person B, B is wrong, I'm right. C, C is wrong, I'm right. D, D is wrong, I'm right. Yeah. If it's one person, hard to say, huh? Yeah, we have to examine the circumstances. But if it's multiple person, <laughs> what's the chance that you are the one eye man in the land of the blind? <laughs> you know what they say, right? The one eye man in the land of the blind is king. <laughs> Have you heard of this before? I never heard before. Yeah, maybe because Sufu thought about it myself. <laughs> but I've, I've, I had this uh, friend uh, among my uh, uni friends. Uh, so he, he, I, I learned from other people very interesting lessons, you know. Yeah, he went from one job to another job to another job to another job. In that two, three years, most of us are on my, our first job or at most second job. Yeah, and, and because better prospects came along, not because we are so miserable, <laughs> we have to leave. <laughs> but this friend, I mean, I, I'm not laughing at him. I was not, we were not laughing at him. We were like cracking our head trying to help him. But every three to six months, at most six months, he will have something to complain and then he will leave. Yes, yeah, I thought if and, and more or less is more or less the same thing, you know. So I thought if it's the same thing, then maybe it's your problem, you know. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so at, as we practice the 10 wholesome bits, because the 10 wholesome bits are very specific, but sometimes the 10 wholesome bits, do you, do you find that? Some of the deeds are not specifically what we usually do. Coverting other people's thing, what <laughs> covert um, other people's husband or wife. Like. Maybe yes, maybe no. But usually these are quite extreme things. That's why it's under the 10 wholesome, 10 unwholesome. Most of the things we do in our daily life are the stupid small things. <laughs> you know, we get upset over the small things. Yeah. We do small things to upset people. Then we think, but it's not against the precept. 
<laughs> huh? Or maybe we don't even think that way because it's, it's, it doesn't even trigger anything, you know? Yeah, it doesn't trigger anything. Yeah, so as we do this exercise, we must uh, re-examine, you know, re-examine what we are doing on the daily basis, our intent. It all comes back always to our intent. Yeah. And if I may put it then, when you check your intent, then how do you know that the intent is pure or not pure or right or not right? If it, if it is to annoy people, because if we say harm people, then we think, oh no, I'm not harming people. But ask yourself first, your intent is it to please people? Is it to benefit people? And I, I've met people before. No, it's benefit. Then how about the other person? Oh, I didn't think about that. Think about everybody, you know, everybody who is involved. Because there are a lot of people housing to Hwai Si, you know, <laughs> you know what is how called housing to Hwai Si. They only think I want to benefit, I want, they, they only think I want to benefit these few people. Then they think, oh, that justify everything. The, the end justify the means. Yeah. They forget that or they conveniently forget that how about this person, this other person? Yeah. So consider all the people involved. Now, but this is not easy to do. Huh? So the first time you do it, maybe you miss out some people. Second time you do it, maybe you still miss out. But if it's the 20th time you still miss out, huh? then this is what you must do. No? Everybody raise your hand. Face like that. And then, ah, how come y'all don't do? <laughs> Sifu sacrifice myself, teach you a lesson No, You all better remember this moment. <laughs> no, I always slap myself. Yeah. No, I'm serious. Or sometimes I do stupid things. Uh, then I, I realize I slap myself. <laughs> but slap, you think, you think that's bad? Uh? Slap myself, I still do stupid things. Uh, so I have to slap harder. Keep slapping. Slap until one day. Oh, okay. You don't need to slap. The trouble is we, have, we, we, we care about our, our face. We don't want to slap ourselves. Yeah. So we are blinded by our ego. Then we housing to our exit. <laughs> Remember, if you fail in the exercise one time, two times, three times, still you can say you are trying. But if you fail a, a few more times, then you must ask yourself, Hey, maybe I should ask somebody to, to tell me what I'm missing, you know. Or maybe you know what you should do. This is what you should do, you know. You know, when, when I came back from, from US, whenever I sit down with people to, to have discussion or, or have um, counseling, I'll take down notes. This is from 2006. This is my first note in this book, 2006, June 19. Yeah. I think this was the initial notes for the first Heart Sutra that I started writing. So, these days when you see me do Heart Sutra, I don't have any notes. Huh? It's because I did the notes for so many years. It's inside there. And still before class, I will run through again. After each class, I will, I will recollect whether I miss out anything. Or not. <laughs> but when I give students exercise, when I tell students, if you, if you keep on forgetting to catch yourself this and that, 
take a notebook, write down. What Sufu tell you, write down. Before you do anything, refer. But do students do? Don't do. <laughs> Don't do that. What can Sufu do, right? Sufu cannot float around. Hmm? What are you doing? <laughs> cannot. This is not Buddhism. Buddhism don't go and do this. Of course, if you are your 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 merit is only like that, only have this kind of sifu. If your merit higher, ah, then you have a sifu like Buddha. When Venerable Mahamogalada meditate, then oh darker sweet, then Buddha immediately appear in front of him and then give him teaching. But your merit only like that, only like that, only got this sifu zoom. Tell you, tell you, tell you, yum, 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 yum. Then if you don't do <laughs> both, you know? Yeah, I, I'm showing you this not to show off, uh, to tell that if you think Sifu have good memory or Sifu know a lot of things, it's because Sifu do my homework. Right? <laughs> That's why I always tell you I'm lazy. <laughs> That's why I have to force myself to do this. <laughs> you don't believe. <laughs> and this is one of the books. <laughs> So I'm very amazed whenever I tell people to go and take notes. Some of them, without me telling, they, they take notes, very copious notes. And usually you see that the irony is those who need the advice, uh, they don't listen to the advice. Those who don't need the advice, they are doing it already. Yeah. So it's, it amazed me uh, when, I, when I tell some of some students, that they need to do this exercise. I don't tell everybody to do this exercise, but some I specifically tell them, you know. It's ama it amazed me, you know. Yeah, they just don't want to. Just. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Any of you don't have no book? I have a lot of no book. <laughs> oh. <sighs> so. Yeah, my mom used to tell me, boy, no my mother more than four quid. Then my mom would say, no, I'll buy her little piano inside. And next time when they are kids, you know. Then I thought, next time see her. Then later I become more, huh, working. <laughs> uh, then we got students, Tiara. But luckily, I'm not like my mom. My mom, too kind, too compassionate. I'm not compassionate. Or so I just one. <laughs> so I don't worry about students. Yeah, but in I only highlight when I'm in class. Wow, quite quite put out to like what did I quite say? Uh quite say I took notes, but now I can't figure what I was writing. <laughs> yeah, I know quack. No, quack is different, huh? I'm just joking about her put that result. She's a retired nurse. How old already are quite? 70 years old? 73. 73. My mom's age, ah? Yeah. Oh yeah, you can be my mom, no. <laughs> yeah, but quite ah, really impressed me, no. She she has been attending classes since I think 10 odd over years ago. How many people when you are retired have that have the energy? and have the wish to actually still attend class. And not just attend class, uh, take notes. Uh. Of course, she was the nurse, so she, her writing is close to the doctor. So, <laughs> yeah. so sometimes she, she, after taking notes, end of the class, you come, uh, variable, just now you say the four qualities, uh, what are they? Uh? Then I say, what, what do you write down? I say, she said, I wrote down. Then, oh, but I can't understand what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> then I say, show me. Then I look. Uh, I also can't understand. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, and sometimes, sometimes when she attend class, she will, yeah. But she never gets scolded by me for that. Why? It's the effort, no? Yeah, it's the effort. Because when she's not nodding away, she's taking notes. Eh? It's one thing to take notes and not being able to read or and so on, is what another thing to not even take notes. Yeah, or after many times. But you must always remember. 
师傅 don't benefit from you doing it, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sifu don't benefit from it, you know. You are the one who benefit if you do it right. Ask yourself, some of you attend so much Dharma class, Dharma deal all right. Like, you, you can collect long service award, no. <laughs> but so what? <laughs> yeah. All the teachings on ego. Ask yourself, what has what does your ego do for you? Nothing, no, nothing. Repeat after me. Nothing. <laughs> Repeat after me. Right? Raise your hand. Nothing. Yeah. When you fall sick, does your ego help you? Can your ego own self? Your ego? Ooh, then your ego jump up. <laughs> call for grab, call for ambulance. When you're when you're hungry, does your ego go and do it yourself? You feed your ego. Then your ego, then you Ego feel good. That's all you, you get, no? Pacifo, I feel good. Yeah. If then you have to admit to yourself. That's what ego is about. It's about you feeling good. Nothing else, no. Nothing else. Ego is all about you feeling good. That's all. Our greed for feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some of you may feel quite hurt uh, hearing this. But if you want to pull out the, the rotten tube, uh, it's painful, but it's a one-time pain. You don't pull out, then pain for the rest of your life. Uh. <laughs> oh, okay. So, ah, <sighs> <laughs> Have a normal Wednesday again.